OK, uh, let me point out a few things here before we get started with our notes. Um, And so starting today, we're going to have um, daily homework. And the homework is going to come from the new textbook, but I printed out um, your uh, exercise pages from the textbook. And that that's in the uh, second packet here. So um, here you have. Um, homework from uh, 1.1, 1.2, and we're going to just Go over the first two um, sections, split them up uh, over the course of two days. We'll have a, a I think we should be finished early and maybe start a quiz review on Wednesday, quiz review Thursday, and then we're having a quiz on Friday just over um, these two sections with limits. Okay. Will the interviews be posted on your website too? For like the yes, yeah, they're already on there. And then, uh, so everything, uh, the only thing that's not yet, up on the website are the videos, but I'm you know, recording them uh, first period, so um, I'm always trying to upload the videos by um, by the afternoon. Okay. So um, we're going to go through notes, but uh, the other packet is your uh, homework or your exercise pages, and you're only responsible for the ones that I assign. So here, this is page 89. Um, Sometimes the pages are maybe a little bit off, but they're all within the correct section. So if you turn to page 89, I think that's three pages in. Okay, that's the end of 1.1. And um, it says here AP practice one through eight. So AP practice is one through eight here. Right. Now, uh, these are multiple choice questions that are, um, I think, what the, uh, the textbook um, thought would be good for uh, the format for um, you know getting used to the format for AP exam. But what I did was especially well, just for the AP problems, though, I put them on a separate page in case in case you don't want to um, you want to see the, the pages. Um, or the problems uh, with some space to work with. So if you flip, I know it's not quite matching up here, but it says page 18 at the very top. So go to the, um, the second. The, uh, that part of this packet, and I printed out those problems so you guys can choose to work those problems here. You guys see that? So I only printed out the AP problems. Um, on this, so you see one through eight here. Did everybody see that? The uh, it's near the it's near the back of the packets. Oh, sorry, it's, it's near the back of the exercise packet. Oh. So the exercise packet has all the problems in it, but with the AP multiple choice problems, I split them up into a second half if you find those to be um, it's more convenient. Okay, you guys see those. And then um, on um, tomorrow is page 99 to 102. So that's um, here, 31 to 49 odds. So you go to page 99 and then page 31 to 49. Now these are not AP problems, so I did not print them on a separate page, but I would like for you to work out your problems on a separate page. But anytime I anytime you see AP practice, um, you'll see the AP practice problems in your original packet. But I also um, spell I also separated these problems towards the end of your packet if you want to do the problems um, you know, with some space to work with. So you, you reprint the problems just to give us more space. So. Yeah, yeah, I try to. Right. But the exercise problems, though, the non multiple choice questions, I want you guys to use your own paper account. Does that, that make sense? Everybody okay. cares. Um, uh, now, these exercise problems, as well as uh, the AP problems, uh, are on my website. I mean, the, the, the solution keys are on my website. So if you go to chapter one, limits page, I'll send out a link this afternoon, but you can just go to Calc AB, chapter one, and then 
I think I have two columns. Uh, one will be the exercise problems and the other will be AP problems. So, but everything is going to be con self contained within the day that we cover it. So it should be easy to find. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be checking it daily. I'll be checking homework daily. OK, any other questions? We have pop sessions every day. I'm sorry, we have pop sessions like every day. Uh, I don't have I don't I don't have um, uh, announced help sessions. I will have a help session on Friday, but if you have any any questions, you can just always come in in the morning. I think the only thing is this Thursday is my BC. BC students, they're having a quiz on Thursday, so I think that th I think this Thursday morning will be for them, but you can come in any morning. Um, I can go over if it's like five, 10 minutes. I can go over any problems you want, but I'll I'll have a announced official help session um, that Friday morning. OK, let's go to uh, packet here. So if you go to the next page here, page zero, this is just some uh, important concepts that that I highlighted. We're going to uh, you know, come back to these. I think I try to organize some of the steps um, into separate categories there, especially different ways of finding limits. Okay, so that's just like a reference page. So let's go to page one. Okay, so what is a limit? Um, limit is similar to order pair, similar to finding a Y value on the graph, um, but it's a, uh, with a slight um, uh, change, um, subtle change. So definition of limit, limit is the Y value that a function or graph approaches. So that's something they have to get used to here. Um, it's talking about the approach. Um, so the Y value that the graph approaches, as the X moves closer to a given constant. Okay. Um, but a function value is the physical location of that Y value at a specific, um, at that specific X. So let's start with something that we all know how to do, and that's finding order pairs. Okay. So let's say I have this function here. You got a graph, you got a hole in it. It says the Y value, so when X is two. So what's F of two equal to? So if I ask you, what is your order pair at when X is two, you would say one, right? Because that's where the point exists, okay? Now the difference with limit is we're also looking at two. This is the notation here. When X is two, what is Y equal to? Now the limit is the is the, the approach. So what I want us to do is I want to find, I want us to, to choose two points close to two on the graph uh, where the graph is. Okay, so I'm going to pick points on either side of two close to it. So here, this is this graph is this portion of the graph is to the left of my target. So I'm going to pick just a point. Doesn't matter where, as long as it's close to two on the left side of two. And I want you to pick a point on the other side of two, close to two as well. Okay. Everybody have those two points highlighted? Okay. Now approach. So starting uh, with each point, I want you to move closer towards that target, closer towards two. So I'm going to just follow along the path of the graph. I'm going to move towards two. So there's the arrow. I'm going to make the, the point get closer towards the target, towards two. So I just have to follow along the path of the graph. Wherever the path of the graph leads me, I got to take, I got to go that path. And same thing with the other point here, move towards two. So now the question is, are the two arrows headed towards the same destination? Yes. Yes, okay. And where is, where are those arrows headed towards? It's getting closer to a Y value of what? Four. Four. So that's the distinction here. Even though the graph doesn't exist, at that order pair, because there's a hole there, the approach is consistent. That's all limit requires. As long as you can visually see the arrows pointing towards the same destination, that is your limit. So even though the point lives in a different location, as long as the arrow is pointed to the same destination, that is your limit. If they're not pointing to the same destination, then there is no limit. So limit exists 
if the arrows are pointing to the same y value. Yeah. Is the limit always going to be like a whole? It doesn't have to be, but it could be. Okay. We don't care. I mean, it, it, if it's a whole, if it's an asymptote, uh, or not asymptote, if it's a whole, or that point can be connected, but we don't care. We just care about the arrows. Okay. Wherever the arrow is pointing, that is our answer. Okay. Even if that hole is throwing you off. Okay, so in order for a limit to exist, the graph must approach the same real number. We'll talk about why I say real number there. Real number y value uh, from both sides of the target x value constant. Okay. okay. Any questions so far? All right. Um, now there are these are a couple of instances where the limit does not exist. Right. One is where I have a jump discontinuity. And so um, let me uh, go to that point there. So that target point that we're going to look at is at five. So let's discover this. Why is limit does why the limit does not exist here? So limit as x approaches five of f of x. So approach that means I have to pick points on either side of five. Let's do that. Pick points on either side of five. And I want you to draw an arrow towards five along the path of the graph. So now the question is, are those two arrows headed towards the same y value? No, they're not. So therefore, the limit does not exist. It doesn't matter that there is a point here. It doesn't matter there's a hole there. It doesn't matter that the graph does exist here. We don't care about it. We look at the arrows, OK? If the arrows are, are taking me, leading me towards the same Y value, that is that's when I have a limit. If they're not leading me to the same Y value, limit does not exist. So I say D and E to uh, for uh, abbreviation there, but you can also write does not exist. Or you can even say undefined. You have a lot of options. They all are interchangeable. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good. I have Dave, Kelly, yes. and Caitlin Barnett. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, sorry. Where's the other right? Good question. Yeah. So it doesn't like it can be like anywhere to the left or right. It doesn't have to be on the exact X. Or... Doesn't have to be. Yeah, but I, I would say uh, stick close. Stick close. You don't want to go too far away. If you go too far away, there may be other um, things going on that um, that's not really what's happening. So yeah. So I would pick points relatively close enough where you can. Start and then move towards the move towards your destination. Okay, are we good with example two? All right, example three, uh, limit as x approaches three. This is another uh, instance where the limit does not exist. So if you can pick points on either side of three. And then make your graph head towards three. So the left arrow is taking me towards a y value of what? What's, hap what's happening to, to this arrow? OK. It has like a, a sharper curve. Yeah. yeah, so what y value is this arrow headed towards? It's continuous, right? Mm -hmm. So where's that arrow headed? Positive. Positive infinity, yeah. Keeps going up, right? What is this right arrow headed towards? Same. Uh, yeah, positive infinity. Now, is positive infinity a real number? It's not a real number. So in the order, of, even though they are technically approaching the same quote unquote y value, but it needs to approach the same real number y value in order for a limit to exist. So here we say that the limit um is equal to um it doesn't exist okay but we can create a subcategory and say okay the limit doesn't exist but here is a visual as to what's happening the graph are they're both headed towards possibility so even though the limit doesn't exist that possibility kind of gives you a quick visual okay all right i know what the graph looks like so a lot of times um these are interchangeable, but just understand that if you see a limit equals positive infinity, 
it means that the graph looks like this, but it is technically a dosonic symbol. It's not a real number. It's not a real number, right? And like also like if it's like if the two different like functions or lines are like curving up at different speeds, would have to like affect. Uh, no, it doesn't matter. Yeah, as, as long as you know one may be uh, approaching faster than the other, but if they're both approaching positive infinity, that still does not exist. All right, example four is kind of a strange uh, scenario here. We're not going to see this very often, um, but the idea is that if you were to graph this function, it's going to be really messy here. It looks like if I can keep zooming in, it will kind of settle in on the y value but it never does. So no matter how far you zoom in, this graph is never going to settle on the Y value. It's going to just keep kind of going back and forth and it's never settling towards the Y value. So this also does not exist, but just want to show you um, that there's a third option, but really we're not going to live here. We're going to live here mostly. And so we looked, we were able to um, evaluate limits graphically. So this is our focus today. Our focus is on the graphical perspective. We can also find limits using a table of values, um, but um, it looks messy, but just want to show you how to read a table and find a limit. So all the messy work is done for you here. Let's say I wanted to plug points around one. So I chose 0.9. 0.99, 0 0.999. So in other words, it's kind of like using arrows headed towards the destination from the left side of that destination. So I'm just picking points really, really close to that target. So 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999. And then from the other side of my target, I'm also choosing values close to that target. So imagine plotting a point on the other side of one and then drawing an arrow towards it. Let's draw an arrow towards it. You can make your X value closer and closer, smaller and smaller towards one. Now, if you were to take these decimals and insert them into the function, these are the Y values that you'll get back. So if I plug 0.9, I'll get 2.71. If I put 0.99, I'll get 2.97. 0.99, I get 2.997. So here, imagine the graph is in front of you and you are plotting your points on either side of um, your target. And then you're drawing an arrow towards your target. And then you're looking at the Y values to see, are the Y values moving towards the same destination? And can I zero in on that Y value approach? So this side here, what's the Y value getting closer to? What's the Y value getting closer to? Oh, three. Three, right? What's the Y value getting closer to on this other side? Same, three. Also well. three. So this side's approaching three, this side's approaching three. Does the graph exist at one? No. It doesn't exist, but does that matter? No. My limit is still going to be what? Three, even because there's a consistent movement towards that Y value of three. So let's say at one, the order pair is at nine, right? There's a jump. This is not continuous, but even with that nine there, we will say they'll still say limit is three, right? Because the graph is approaching three, even though that point is defined elsewhere, we're looking at the approach or the limit. So the exact y value doesn't matter. The exact y value doesn't matter as long as you can convince yourself that your y value is marching towards the same value. Okay, if that makes sense. Okay, let's look at uh, next page, page two. All right, I'll walk one. I'll walk through uh, one through seven with you, and then um, you guys will um, try eight through fifteen, and then we'll look at the other perspective, which is harder. And the harder thing is, if I give you a, a list of characteristics, can you fill out what the graph looks like? So that's a little bit harder, but we'll do the easy one first. Okay. So here, limit as exponential negative five. Anytime you see the word limit. You have to make sure you are starting on either side of your target and then moving towards the target and looking at the arrows to see are the arrows moving towards the same y value. So picking points on either side of negative five. Here's a point to the left of negative five. Here's a point to the right of negative five. Now you want to choose points relatively close. Don't choose points too far away because there may be 
other um, properties going on that's not consistent what we want. So I'm picking points on either side of negative five. I'm drawing arrows towards negative five along the path of the graph. Okay, so part number one, what would you conclude? This thing does. Because the arrows are not moving towards the same y value. Number two, limit as x approaches negative four. So I'll pick points on either side of negative four. I'll draw arrows towards negative four, towards the x value of negative four. Are these arrows headed towards the same y value? Yes. Y value of what? One. Yeah. Do you know to pick points above and below instead of? Um, it's it. Could be above or below, but really I'm picking points to the left and to the right. So wherever the graph is. Basically, wherever the graph is. Yeah, you're never going to you're never going to plot a point where the graph doesn't exist. So just pick points. It, it, it does look like to above and below, but it's really more to the left and to the right. It just happens to be above and below because of the way the graph is curved or the graph is uh, rising or falling. Yeah. What does it mean when there's like a like low to equation is like an X like arrow to the negative five when there's not? Yeah, so the difference is this is talking about a limit. This is talking about an order pair. It's asking this is so this notation is saying is the, does the graph exist at that point? So this one, if you see an order pair, we could care less about what's happening about the approach. We just want to just zero in at negative three. And do we see a Y value defined in negative three? If there is, we identify that Y value. So F of negative three, do you see a order pair there? Yes. OK, what's that? Y? What's that? Y value? Negative two. Okay. So at negative three, we do see the graph cross through that Y value of negative two, and that point is defined. So negative two. Right. What about the limit as X approaches negative three? So I'm going to pick points on either side of negative three. Draw an arrow towards it. And are those two arrows headed towards the same destination? Yes. Also what? Also negative two. So this is something that we're gonna we're gonna talk about later here. What can I say about a graph if my order pair and my limit are consistent? Giving me the same value. Function. Okay, what else? This is a little bit of a future topic, but I want to kind of see if you guys can make a generalization here. What is it about the graph? What is it that, or what conclusion can you make if, let's say, the limit and the uh, uh, order pair are in agreement versus ones that are not in agreement? What scenario do you see where the limit and y value are giving you the same number versus limit and order pair that are giving you the same value? Can you make a, a generalization. You don't have to get this right. This want to kind of point this out here. So what this tells you is if your order pair and your limit are consistently giving you the same number, what that tells you is that that is that there's no strange behavior there. There's no hole or asymptote or strangeness. That basically says that this is the it's a continuous function. If my limit and my order pair are in agreement with each other, that means there's no sudden break in the graph. That means my approach is moving towards the same y value where that y value exists. So we're going to kind of discover this after. This next few sections, but I want to point that out. But what's f of three equal to? So we're just zeroing in on three. Do you see any y value that lives at three? No, there's a hole. There's a hole there. So this is undefined or does not exist. Do you put undefined or does not exist? Yeah, either one is acceptable. Right. What about the limit as x approaches three? So pick points on both sides of three and then move your arrow towards three 
um, negative three. Yep, the arrow is taking me to negative three. Limit as x approaches six. Does not exist, right? One's taking me here, one's taking me here. So undefined. Let me do one more here before we go to the bottom here. 7b, the limit as x approaches 9. There's only one way to go. Mm -hmm. So what do you think the conclusion would be? All solutions. Does not exist. Why? Why can I? Why do I say does not exist? Well, can I pick a point to the left of nine and start there? OK, can I pick a point to the right of nine? No, no, no. There's a, if I don't have a starting point, if I can't even uh, have my initial points to, to start with, I can't compare with anything, right? So if, if it's basically, basically saying, if you ever see an endpoint, the limit is not going to exist there because I'm, I'm not able to get my conditions to, to even start off at the right place, right? I got to pick points on both sides. It's got to have a, has to be a, a uh, consistent motion from both sides. So even though the left side is approaching a y value of four, we're not able to get anything to show us on the other side of nine. Okay. All right, you guys wanna try eight through 15 and try those on your own and we'll compare our answers and see how we do. Check A through 15. Any questions? Any ones you want to go over? Yeah. Right, so the graph doesn't exist at that pole, but the graph does exist at this point, right? So now the limit would take us towards this hole, but the order pair is where that point lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So the, the endpoints are like the only ones like they the end. No, supporting. The endpoints are only defined as like the ones like where there's like no more like lines after. Like, That's right. Yeah. Like if you're like for example like a negative seven like x equals negative seven, where is that hole? Even if there's still like a line after it, so that would be end. Uh. Yeah, I guess it wouldn't be an endpoint, but would the limit exist at neg at at, uh, at negative seven here? Oh no, no, it doesn't. It wouldn't, right? Because if I pick points on either side, they're gonna the arrows are not gonna be pointing towards the white value. Even if it's not like, like an endpoint, it must be not exist. That's right. Yeah, yeah. 
So we call that jump discontinuity. If you see two different branches that are not lining up, then you know that limit's not going to exist anytime you have a jump discontinuity. Uh, let's do one more set here. Can you guys try 16 through 23? Page three. And then we'll talk about the more challenging version of these problems, which is can you sketch a graph if I give you a bunch of properties? I don't see um, asymptote here, vertical asymptote negative four. Mm -hmm. Asymptote is yeah. negative four now. How would you do like 18 and 18 with the negative four? It's kind of hard to tell whether. Yeah, so right. So the, the idea is that you see those arrows there. That's an indication that there is a vertical asymptote by negative four. So, uh, so the graph never touches negative four. You see lines like that, just like a swing. Too. That's right. We know that there's a wall that the graph is is moving towards, but never touching. So really, I want to point out 18 and 19 with you. For 18, uh, the limit is doesn't exist because obviously the arrows are not headed towards the same y value. But because they're moving in the same direction, we can subcategorize it as positive infinity um, because we're able to, to create a visual representation of what the graph looks like uh, if we add plus infinity under that D and E. So would that be a continuous function, 18 and 19? Okay. They will not be continuous, yeah. right? Because now continuous means you can sketch the graph without lifting your pen or pencil. Right? So we'll talk about that later. But um, if if, ever, if I ever have to lift up my pen or pencil, then um, to move to another part of the graph and to complete it, uh, it's not continuous. Now, f of negative four is undefined because there is no physical point that lives on that asymptote. So um, that's why it's undefined there. Now, what if the asymptote, what if the arrows are not moving in the same direction? One's going up and the other's going down. Then my limit would just be what? Uh, that's, that's right. So we're not going to provide a subcategory if the arrows are not moving the same direction. So for instance, if you look at um, um, 28 and 30, you see how the arrows are not consistently moving. I mean, we all, we all know any asymptote is, does not exist, but a subcategory is possible if the arrows are both moving down or both moving up. But if one is moving up, the other is moving down, the best we can say is does not exist. We're not going to we have a subcategory for if the arrows are not. Are not consistent. Just a second. Oh, there is a second arrow for 28. Uh, for which, no, which number? 28. 28. Because he can't go on the other side. Right. So uh, because the, you see the arrow is moving down here, but the other one's moving up. Oh, so yeah. because of that, that direction yeah. of motion, we just say it does not exist. We're not going to add anything more to that. Okay. 
OK, before I move on any further here, I want you to look at all these graphs here. Okay, All the graphs that is presented to us, these are all functions. And what's a way for us to know whether a graph is a function just by looking at the graph? It needs to pass the what? Vertical line test. So vertical line test means every imaginary vertical line that I drop, I'm never going to hit more than one point. I'm never going to hit more than one point. Okay. It looks like it kind of here, but the asymptote, they're just moving very, very inching slowly but they're never going to be above each other. So basically, let me show you some of that. That would not be a function, right? Okay. This would not be a function, right? Because I'm not able to, it's not going to be able to pass a vertical line test, right? Or maybe something like this. Right, doesn't pass a vertical line test, okay? So whatever graph that we create, we need to make sure they pass a vertical line test. So I think that's the, the most challenging thing is when you are trying to fill out all these different properties, it's easy to forget, oh, I, my graph needs to pass a vertical line test. Um, but the way that a lot of students do it is very subtle in a way that it doesn't look like it fails vertical line test, but it does. So I want to show you what that looks like so you don't make those mistakes. All right. How do we approach like, these problems, these limits problems differently if they like, don't pass vertical line tests? Well, we're going to create the graph so that they do pass a vertical line test. So I'm going to show you what that uh, what that looks like. So the difference on page four is the properties are filled in, but the graph is empty. So we're going to have to create a graph with these properties in place. Okay. Now, some of these properties are given in a way where there is room for interpretation. Okay. So if there's room for interpretation, what that means is you may have 15 graphs that look different from each other, but they could all be correct because they all fulfill the condition that is spelled out. Okay. So the way that I like to start the, off with this is start with the order pairs because the order pairs are easy because you can just plot that point and be done with it and there's nothing more to be to do. So I'm going to pick out the easy ones first. So two is easy, three is easy. We're going to plot those points. We want to sketch a graph of a function that satisfies the given description. So go ahead and plot a order pair at negative five, negative two. And then once you're done with it, check it off. Plot an order pair at negative one, comma six. That's easy. That's done. Now let's go to number one here. We want a graph with this behavior where the limit as x approaches negative five is equal to three. So that means I want my graph to approach a y value of three on either side of negative five. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to do this. We're going to find that order pair. I'm just I'm going to put this off to the side. I don't have to write this down here. I want to kind of show you so it doesn't get mixed in with the graph just yet. At negative five, order pair negative five, three, we're going to plot a hole there, okay? Because, I mean, it may not be a hole to be get to uh, at the end of the problem, but it's nice to start off with a hole because if you need to fill it in, it's easier to fill it in and because you would rather uh, fill in than having to put a point there and erase later. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to extend the graph on either side of negative five because we want the graph to approach that y value from both sides. So at negative five, three, I'm going to plot an, uh, a hole. And I'm just going to have a bit of a segment extending out. Um, this may not be complete, but at least I know that my graph is fulfills that condition at that point, right? Because maybe I, I may, Maybe I make my graph a little prettier later because I then later on at the end of the problem, I'll, I'll kind of have an idea where the, I want the graph to extend. But I don't want to grab, I want, don't want to extend the graph too far because if I do, what's going to happen is it may, may fail the vertical line test. So I'm just kind of holding off right now. I just want to get this fulfilled, right? Because if I pick points on either side of negative five and draw arrows, the arrows do move towards the y value of negative three. So for now, it is partially complete. So I'm just going to put a check mark off that. 
You may have a graph that's going slightly up versus slightly down, but just go ahead and create very small segments that extends towards that, that hole, but don't go too far. All right, number four, limit as x approaches to negative three equals negative infinity. What does that tell you? That tells you that there is a what at negative three? Vertical, that's vertical right. asymptote. And then what does that negative infinity tell you about the arrows? Point down. Okay. One or both or? Both. Both, that's right. So if you see negative infinity, that means there's a visual that you can create. It's going to look like this. The graph is going to fall towards the negative three. So draw a vertical asymptote. At negative three. And then you can draw arrows that now here's um you know I'm only able to point this out because these are the things I've seen students do in the past. Um, if I have a graph where the limit is negative infinity at three negative three? Sorry, let's say. Uh, uh, let me say this is three here. Sorry, realize I'm creating different value here. So the way that you want to draw uh, infinity, you have to make sure that your arrows are are drawing towards your asymptote. This is what I see some students do. They realize there's an asymptote there, but they draw it this way, which is not correct. Okay. So make sure that if you if it's headed towards negative infinity, the arrows are not going to move away from that asymptote. It's going to move towards it. So this is not correct. They may see that distinction. Yeah. We can, yeah, that is my eventual goal. I, I'm right now, I'm just making sure that every little one of my um, properties are taken care of. And at the end, I'm going to kind of make it a little bit prettier. But yeah, that's, I mean, I could end the graph here and start the graph here, but I think to make it a little bit prettier, I will make this graph kind of move down and kind of connect with this portion. That's say, why do you start the arrows at negative five? Sorry, negative five equals negative five. For the vertical asymptote. Oh, um, did I start at negative five? Or like the y, the, the y coordinate, y value? Uh, I don't have to. I okay. can start a little bit higher, I can start a little bit lower. What I care more about is that my graph is, um, I just want those arrows to, to show the property. But right now, these branches are incomplete. I, I haven't really, okay. I haven't really settled on where I want those graphs to move towards. I just want to get my individual properties taken care of. OK, F of three is undefined. What does that mean? Or, yeah, that means a whole or it just means that there's nothing at three. OK, so I just have to make sure that um, that at the, at the very end that my graph does, doesn't um, uh, accidentally cross over y value three, but really there's nothing for us to put there because we don't want anything there. So if we put something there, then we kind of go against what this is saying. So I'm just going to put a um, put a star next to this because maybe I should make sure that at the end of the problem that that point doesn't accidentally get defined. Or that there is no point that lives at three. If you did a hole, mm -hmm. you can just and you can go over it and do a hole, right? Yeah, you can just do it. Do a hole there. Now I would hold off on that because here this is also referring to three. So maybe I want to kind of take care of this one first. Okay. So here it says that the limit does not exist. So this is where there's a lot of room for interpretation. Okay. So you can either make the graph an endpoint, you could make it an asymptote, or you can make it two disjointed problems. What you don't want to do is you want to just create a hole here because this would not fulfill limit, right? If I had a hole there, if I made the graph looks like this, look like this, then the limit does exist, right? So I want everything except for that. 
So for six, a lot of options here. Let me show you all the different variations and you are able to create even more variations than this. Um, so if I have limit as X approaches three, does not exist. Okay, a lot of options here. So I can make it a three with an asymptote. Maybe I can make one go up, other go down, or both go up, both go down. That's a that's a possibility. Or at three, I can make my graph look like this. I can just pick any random point, make it connect to that point, and be done with it. Or I can make it a graph where there's a hole, and then it picks up somewhere else. Sorry, another hole here. Picks up somewhere else and keeps going. Right, so I can make it two disjointed graphs. I can make it an endpoint. I can make it an asymptote. A lot of variations where it does not exist. What you don't want to do is this. You don't want to do this. This would not be does not exist. This one, the limit does exist, right? Because I can pick points on either side and move towards that same wipeout. Your dirt variation is one is like a point, one is a hole. Yeah, that's that's a possibility. But the problem is that f of three is undefined. So I so if I want if I want a point to connect to that three, I got to make them both open circle. Because it says here F3 is undefined, so I got to go back and make sure. If this statement wasn't here, then I can make one the whole and one those open circle. That's fine. All right. Uh, for number seven, limit as X approaches six equals four. So again, at six, four, I'm going to create a hole and just make my graph extend on both sides. So this is what my graph looks like, and your graph may look a little different. Then you just like like start drawing the lines in. Yeah, start drawing the lines. What I did was I uh, made those connect. But if you don't want if you don't want to make all those points connect, just make them stop at those points. You can have all these uh, separate segments if you want. Just make sure that you don't do this. I see some students do this where they see they say a limit exists. They put an arrow at that point and then they draw or they put a hole there and they draw an arrow here. You don't want to do this. If you draw an arrow like this, I'm going to follow the arrow, and that arrow is eventually going to is also it's going to cause a conflict with vertical line tests. So um, it's okay to um, create a segment that kind of just juts out a little bit, but never put arrows pointing towards the middle of the graph. If you do that, chances are I'm going to follow that arrow, and that arrow is going to eventually cause a problem with another part of the graph. So don't ever, don't ever use arrows. Um, in the middle of the graph. Now, if you have arrows that's exiting the graph, that's fine because you know that arrow is never going to conflict with anything else. Um, or your arrows are headed towards an asymptote. So, but never have an arrow point towards the center of the graph. Yeah. I think when you put, you put five positive two and five, so five negative two coordinate points. Um, or negative five positive. It's supposed to be negative five, negative two, but it depends on negative five, positive two. Oh, yeah, you're right. Um, definitely negative five is thing. Yeah, sorry, this point should be down here. Yeah, is that what you got right there? Yeah. yeah. So you can connect, you can connect, you can connect the points to the arrows. Then. You can, yeah. Or you can, or you can make a stop here and then pick up, pick up somewhere else and draw the arrows down here. Okay, uh, running out of time here. We'll, um, uh, practice more with this tomorrow, but you guys have homework tonight. So check your calendar, um, and I'll send out a reminder this afternoon. All right, come Thank get you. your phones. Yeah. Hey, do you hear someone from the drawing of the graph? My drawing is kind of like not very neat. You know? Yeah, that works. You probably, I do want to see the arrows kind of, kind of, um, there's like a magnet where the arrows are kind of drawn into it, so it's a little more like more like that. Okay. Yeah. This one, it looks like it's that's fine. Just uh, you want the graph to kind of have a more curved towards. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. But right. other than that, it looks good. As long as it passes the vertical line. Yeah. That's all yeah. passes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, how would you answer like these based off of what we learned? Because yeah. they're like harder, like like they're like described in the other places. So, like I don't really know. Like I don't know. So, um, 
I mean, if you're having trouble with them, you can kind of skip it. But I think this you can tell. Right? You can do that, yeah. That one here. Um, yeah, here. Well, this is asking you to put it into limit notation. So this one limit as X approaches one of cosine of X. Oh, the limit as X approaches zero. So limit as X approaches zero of cosine of X is equal to one. Oh, you're just going to read that back slowly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the keys on the website too. Okay. Thank you. All right, thanks guys. Have a great day.